Hi everyone, today we're going to be working on EWA or Eaglewood Arts Blast 75600. And this is the first for me as I've never done an EWA model before, so it'll be really interesting to see how this turns out. So let's open the box, you know, make a little decision here, and then we'll open the box. And we're going to see that there's going to be quite a few layers. Uh, these are actually thicker than the normal ones that I've been working on for the wood uh, models. And it comes with a manual and it's all uh, graphics so it, you know you don't actually have to read much and it's actually very straightforward for the most part. Now these sheets are large. It's kind of hard to find room to put all these and lay them out so that I can get parts easily but we'll manage somehow. And uh, be careful because there are these little pieces that will come out of the box when you're actually opening the package. Be sure to check the manual to see where you're supposed to be waxing. Um, it's very clear and they have a symbol for the wax areas. And it's very helpful for areas where you're going to have wood that are be that are going to be uh, rotating within each other. And it's actually sometimes good to use for when you're trying to squeeze in certain parts that will not fit in very well. Now we're going to be putting in the axis for the wheels. And this is going to be held together by these two tabs. Make sure to give it a good push in. A lot of these parts are very, very exact, so it's actually hard to kind of push in, so you're gonna have to put in a little bit of strength. Now, after whacking the area, um, you're gonna be starting to put in the pistons for the engine, and this is a very repetitive step, so I'm actually just gonna be fast forwarding this part a lot or skipping, but I'm just showing you the first part of how to create one of the pistons, and it will just be repeat um, for about four of the pistons. Although they look really cool, I never like these pistons in the wood models because they usually do get caught on one of the wood parts somewhere so it actually makes it really hard for the uh, wood model when you're actually um, cranking it so that it will move forward. It, something gets stuck a lot of the times and it's somewhere within the piston most of the time. Now we're just going to be assembling the rest of the uh, engine and as you can see here this area was waxed because there are going to be two pieces of wood that are pretty much touching each other and the wax will actually help him make it uh, rotate smoother. And we're going to give it a little bit of test, uh, trying to make sure that the parts work properly. Make sure that you look at the manual closely to see uh, how to rotate the pistons in because as you can see they are opposite from each other and then the housing part of the hit piston uh, is actually offset too, so you want to make sure that those align properly so that um, it will actually work. Now the engine goes on to the body itself and make sure that you uh, put it in very carefully. And then let's finish it off by putting the two tabs into the body. Now we're going to be making the side of the body itself and we're going to be putting these uh, braces in uh, to make sure that it becomes sturdy. This area felt a little rough, so I'm going to give it a little sand down. I was really confused for a while trying to see where this one part fit. I had to keep looking at the manual until I finally figure out where to put it. I actually love building wooden models, especially when you're putting these pieces together because you hear that snap. And it is actually very satisfying to hear it when it snaps into place really easily. But on the flip side, it's actually really annoying when a part just will not fit. And there's nothing you can really do about it except maybe to sand down the part a little bit or use the wax to actually uh, lubricate so that the wood piece can kind of fit in properly. Now we're going to attach that to the base of, of the model itself. Now give it a little rotation just to check to make sure that all the parts work. Now this paper clip that came with it is used to push the uh, rubber band through except this is really horrible. I really did not enjoy the rubber band part. A lot of the other wood models will actually come with a wooden dowel piece that you can use to push or pull the rubber band through but in this case it comes with a paper clip and as you can see because it's a really small surface area of the paper clip when you're pulling it actually hurts your fingers a lot. And we're going to be pulling this rubber band through those holes um, that are attached to the body itself. 
and this whole rubber band portion was the least enjoyable of this model. Um, it actually has to do with, I think it's a kind of a bad design because a lot of the other models will give you a bigger hole for the rubber bands to go through and I'll show you later exactly which area I'm talking about where it did not really work well and it was really difficult and it took me about an hour just to figure out how to get all the rubber bands in properly. Now this is the area that was really annoying. So as you can see, you have to pull half of the rubber band in through and then try to put it onto those little dabs there. Um, the problem is, is that that paper clip will not fit through that hole very nicely. So you have to make a really small hole or actually you have to make the paper clip really small. But if it's too small, you cannot push through the half of the rubber bands because um, it is too thin now. And so I tried everything and it was actually uh, really annoying and it got really hard. And as you can see here, I made the paper clip small but it still got stuck in there and it, I had to struggle to get that part out. And um, it took me about an hour just to get the rubber bands connected properly. So after baking a sweat, uh, the rest of the model was relatively easy, except for those dowels that uh, you see that are already attached to that piece. Um, those dowel was a little bit bigger than the hole itself, so it was actually really hard to get them through the hole, but uh, it is manageable. And now we're putting together the wheel axis, and this is the part that will go through the hole and that the wheels will be attached to later on. So just slip it right through each other, uh, they will slide in pretty easily. Um, and then you're going to be putting in a series of wheels onto it. And the first one's actually hard because the um, the wood is slightly wobbly, but as you put more in, it becomes stiffer, so it actually makes it easier for the other parts to go in. Now slip it through the hole right there, and then close off the rest of the side of the body. And this is another area where that was difficult because you're actually putting the uh, body part in uh, perpendicularly, but as you can see, the rod was um, actually sticking out and it was at an angle and it was hard to put all the pieces together when you're trying to put these side pieces attached while the bottom is putting uh, it being attached at the same time and so you kind of get these weird angle areas where you have to put in the tabs at the two or three different angles at the same time and it, it is really difficult to do. Now we are putting together the front body part and this will be attached to the front side of the main body. Give it a really good push uh, so that it will snap into place. And now we're going to be putting in the rest of the frame for the body itself. Make sure that tab is on the bottom of the body and that's where the rubber band is going to be put, pulled through later on. Now this part is very repetitive, you're just putting the same uh, pieces into these areas. Um, and this is the rear area and it's actually nice to sometimes just have the repetitive tasks just so that you know you have a little bit of breather. And that should do it for the rear frame. And now we're going to be putting the front of the uh, body itself. Now it's time to build the axis that will be for the front wheel and they're going to be connected together so that when you're rotating one wheel the other wheel would rotate at the same time. Now this axis is actually a really awkward piece as as you can see there's going to be multiple angles and uh, they're, they're all long pieces so it becomes very unstable and uh, very wobbly and it is a little bit difficult to put the pieces together when you're attaching it to the main body. Now this fan piece here, I actually uh, later on glued this part together just because it kept popping off and until the whole part is assembled it's a little bit hard for it to uh, be put in place because it keeps popping off and so that glue would just help it make it a little bit sturdier. It's not necessary, it just helped make the process a little bit smoother. Now this is the uh, lever piece that's going to be on the top and this is going to be the release for the bed. And so the bed is actually um, 
on a rubber band and this will actually release it so that the bed will go up but the problem is is that it was a very awkward design and I don't know if it was just it missed properly designed or that I accidentally built it the wrong way but it was actually not holding the bed into uh, into place so it was actually really hard and I actually had to rotate it out and you will see that part later on. So as you can see we're putting the rubber band um, through the axis itself on one side and then having it go through the tab that I explained earlier and then we're actually going to put the rubber band back out and through the other side of the axis and this is actually going to give the axis uh, tension so that it will actually uh, rotate along with each other very well. And now we're going to be putting the top of the body and this is where the driver's seat and also the lever for the release of the bed is going to be attached to. Now we're going to be making sure that the axis uh, vertical rod is going to go through the hole and then snap the rest of the body into place. Now we're going to be attaching the rubber band to the stop for the uh, wind-up portion and this is going to uh, allow the wind-up to be winding up and you're going to hear a click sound so that it actually stops the gear from going the other way and undoing what you're doing when you're cranking. And we're going to give it a little test again. Now we're adding the lever piece and I'll talk more about it afterwards. Now we're going to be putting together the pieces and this is a, going to be an accessory that's going to be attached to the top of the body itself. I don't know what this part is called but it's going to be attached to the top of the body and it's like a accessory. I think it's supposed to be like a steam pipe or vent that's supposed to be showing. I'm not exactly sure but we're going to be making three of these uh, total. And now just finishing up the third one. This part is going to be the housing for the lever for the bed release. And now we're going to be measuring the rubber band length so that I know how much uh, length to give before I cut it and make it shorter. With the shortened rubber band, we're going to be putting it through the hole on the side of the housing and then we're going to be grabbing it with the plier and then attaching it to one of the tabs and then we're going to pull it through and this is where we're going to be using that uh, paper clip again except as you can see um, it actually gets stuck there so I actually have to make the, uh, the paper clip narrower so that it can actually fit through the hole and this is another area where I think the design was a little off and that that hole is way too small for uh, putting the paper clip through easily so um, I would suggest for the designers of this model next time to make sure the holes are wide enough so that we, they can actually have a tool be able to go through that hole. And now we are creating the housing for the driver's seat and it comes with the front part and then we're adding it to the top and the doors just get wedged in there. Uh, you put it in at an angle and then kind of rotate it in and to hold it in place and then we're going to be adding the, the rear side of the housing and then this will be put together uh, onto the top of the body itself and then everything should be in place. And now we're going to be making the headlights that will be attached to the front of the body. There will be two identical headlights total. A 
attach the headlights to the front of the body on the left side and the right side. Then we're going to be adding the three accessory uh, that I explained earlier onto the top and there's the third one right there. And then we're going to be attaching the accessory piece. My guess is that it's supposed to be like an electrical box uh, meant for the bed release. And now we're going to be putting on the driver's seat. I noticed that the lever was actually rotated the wrong way so I actually took it out and put it back in and then put the housing over it and when you're putting the side in make sure that the lever goes through the hole properly. And now we're making the bed of the truck. So the model had multiple layers and most of them were consistent of the bed pieces and also the tire pieces. So even though it looked like there was a lot of uh, sheets left, the rest of the sheets go actually pretty quickly as the pieces are really large. And while I'm attaching this part, as you can see it broke off because it was a really thin piece with a large hole. And so what I decided to do was just rip it off and then glue the piece in and then held it in place with tacky glue until it kind of dried up and once you put the proper glue on it's going to be like it never broke and it will be very sturdy. Now we're going to add on the detail piece of the side of the bed. And now we're going to be putting in the grill pieces that are going to be on the, the side and on the bottom and uh, I think this is just meant for detail. There are a lot of these instances where you have multiple angles and multiple pieces that you need to put through on the same one piece with multiple holes and it is really difficult trying to get all the pieces aligned together and so you just have to start on one end and start just uh, snapping into place one by one and uh, eventually you get there. And now we're going to be adding in the dowel piece that has an attachment that will be attached to the underside of the bed and this is going to allow it to rotate along that axis so that it will actually um, go up and down when you're actually releasing the lever. And so we're going to be adding two pieces of rubber bands, one on each side and this is going to allow the bed to pop up when the lever is uh, released. Now we're going to be making the wheel and the wheel is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just multiple layers and you're going to be putting these dowels through on uh, four sides and then you're going to be having the wheels go through those holes one by one. Now there are two types of wheels. There's one with the holes in the middle that are circular and then there's another one where the hole, the hole is actually going to be uh, crosses. And if you have the cross piece, make sure that the crosses are aligned because I made this mistake when I was putting them in and they were actually not aligned. I actually had to break it apart and uh, reassemble the wheel so that the crosses are aligned. And here are our six wheels that will be attached to the body itself. And now we're going to be attaching the front wheels and these are the ones with the circular hole. And then we're going to be putting the pieces on the side to secure it in place. Now we're going to be attaching the rear tires and we're going to be actually uh, putting some of the circular pieces together as a spacer and then we're going to be adding the tires afterwards and then we're going to have spacers in between and then we're going to finish it off by securing place with more uh, circular pieces. Here are the intermediate spacers so that the tires are spaced out properly. And then we're attaching the last part of the wheels now. And now we're going to be attaching the last part which is going to be uh, securing the tires into place. And now we're done with the model and this was the EWA Belaz 75600 series and this is where the bed of the truck actually is supposed to be released by that lever and it was actually hard to keep it in place. 
but the model looks great. Um, it's a large model and you know the details are great and it was actually a fun project except for the rubber band portion which I hated. And here are some final images of the model. And I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe or watch other videos if you liked what you see. And thank you for watching!